Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. You will wait for me, sir. Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. Hey, and it's Jordan Drake here. And we are going to do another one of our, you know, advice for a camera company. We're going to talk about Sony this time. One of the big guys, what they're doing well and what we feel that they need to improve. Absolutely. Okay, so straight off the bat, big criticism. Sony needs more megapixels in their cameras, No, right, no, 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 you did that last time. People don't like that. Just kidding, I'm just kidding, because it was fun to screw around with you guys. Uh, you know what, let's talk about nice things first. And really the big thing with Sony right off the bat, they actually really do listen to a lot of input. Yeah, I mean, that's something I really notice with Sony is like when we're on press trips or talking to them, they're always asking, hey, what would you guys like to mm. see? What can we do different? And they're one of the main companies where we actually see those changes implement. Absolutely. I mean, it can take a while. And yeah, of course, like a other... couple generations, <laughs> longer than you, you might know, want. And other companies do it too, but Sony's always been really good about that. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of why we're making this video today, right? Because they're going to listen to all of these, implement them immediately. Thanks, Sony. Maybe not immediately. Two generations. One other really recent improvement that I really like is I think Sony actually has the best system for storage with their dual CF Express Type A slash SD card slots. Yeah, Sony's really the only company using that sort of CF Express slash SD dual slot. And yeah. it's great because it saves space in the body, it adds versatility. I mean, not all the cameras have dual SD card slash CF Express slots, but a lot of them do. I mean, yeah. the FX6, the A7S3, the A1, A1, yeah. Yeah, and this is my favorite format because we're seeing a lot of cameras doing like a CF Express Type B and a separate SD card slot. Sure. But if you're doing some kind of like demanding video format or you're shooting raw and you want to back up to the SD card, mm -hmm. you're either not going to have the option or it's really going to slow you down in right. terms of your buffer. Why I really like this is if I'm doing something demanding, I can record to dual CF Express Type A slots or if it's something a little less demanding, I can have dual SD, sure. use cheap media that we all have and have a backup. I think it's the best solution right now and only Sony's doing it. I just want it on there entire camera lineup. Now one thing that Sony's always done well and still continues to do well is autofocus performance and no matter what anybody's doing now there's no denying that Sony was always the standard everybody else was reaching for. Yeah, we're definitely starting to see some manufacturers like Canon and Nikon, yes. you know, catch up or even surpass them in some categories. But you have to remember, that's just in their like highest end flagship cameras, super expensive. Like if you grab a Canon RP or a Nikon Z5, you're not getting Z9 and R3 performance no. for the autofocus, where Sony is using the same system, their real-time tracking almost across the entire line. Yeah, I mean, you've got cameras like the A6100, the A7C, right? I mean, affordable options that still get your real-time tracking. Now, that's not to say that you're getting the same autofocus performance as you would get in an A1, but you are still getting the same kind of system where it's hard not to recommend how intuitive it is, yeah. how easy it is, and how you just set one thing and it just works. And I think that's a big sales point for a lot of people getting into a system. Another thing we absolutely love about Sony is they're pretty open with their lens mount protocols, which means there are a ton of outstanding third-party lens options that are inexpensive and very good performance. You know, it's interesting because when Sony started with their mirrorless cameras, their E-mount cameras, uh, you know, we would talk to their engineers and they're actually pretty upfront about saying, hey, we're going to open up our protocols, third-party support's going to be a little bit easier, you know, we're not going to hide things. And I think that really paid dividends. I mean, at the time, you're like, oh, are you even going to sell lenses? But of course they did. And it really opens up versatility. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at all of the major third parties, they make lenses in Sony E-mount right now. A lot of those are going to be autofocus options as well, which is great. But I mean, you look at some of our favorite lenses like last year's lens of the year, sure. the Tamron 35150, only available in Sony E-mount. It gives them a real advantage. Now, there's not many restrictions with those. There is one that kind of bugs me, like Sony on the A1, the A9. Sure. They're like, you're only getting 15 frames per second, and probably some of those lenses could keep up with 20 and 30 frames per second. They claim it's second. an autofocusing speed thing. Whatever. Okay, you know. But, you know, that's a <laughs> sacrifice I'm willing to make for the huge amount of versatile options. That yeah. You, you know, third party used to be about saving money, and it's not that way anymore. Now, third party lenses will come out, and you will absolutely desire that lens specifically for your work, for your art. And it's nice to be part of a brand where you know you're not gonna be uh, left out of that. Yeah, we're shooting on an A7 IV right now and we're using Sigma lenses because they work well, they're beautiful. Okay, Sony, so now that we've said a whole bunch of nice stuff, got you all buttered up, it is time for some tough love. Let's get real, Jordan. All right, so the first thing that I think Sony needs to work on is making sexier cameras. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna use the bad word vintage. They don't have a vintage history to pull from, but classy, they can make classier cameras. 
Okay, so I'm a nostalgic person. When you say classy, I just assume like a vintage style. What do you mean by a classy camera? Design? Yeah, I don't mean vintage. I just mean like sexier, right? I mean, Sony cameras are utilitarian. They're black. They're boring. I mean, the A6000 line of cameras were so simple and, and basic. I mean, they were like the Toyota Camry of cameras. I mean, let's make something classy. The A7C, just the fact that it was silver actually stirred a little bit of emotion. But... Like take you know, Hasselblad with their X1D, that's a great example. It's right. like a modern body, but beautifully designed. So they've done something similar, like the RX1 series. Before. I love those, yeah. And yeah, definitely that kind of look. I just worry that they'll take that message and be like, oh, we should do something like back when Hasselblad rebranded Sony cameras and slapped some wood on it, like the Lunar yes. and the Stellar. That's not what the you want. Not the Lunar, the Lunar's terrible. The Stellar was sexy as hell. And not expensive, but just a different design aesthetic that might appeal to people who don't just want black and black. So you're offering your services as a camera designer. I would absolutely design a camera. I don't know, on second thought, I actually might turn out like Homer Simpson's car for the everyman. Topical. And probably just as expensive. The other thing with Sony is I really find that they keep a lot of features separate between their pro video and their consumer camera divisions, and I want that to stop. So clearly, I hope what you mean is that they put their electronic variable ND in every single yes. camera they make. Yes, okay, yes. definitely. That's that, what we want. That, that's a physical limitation, okay. though. Oh, I mean, yeah. If you could do that, I would certainly take it. But more like the software features. You know, when they brought out the FX3, they're like, here is the cinema version of an yeah. A7S3. And yeah, it had a fan in it. It was a different design. You know, it wasn't just a rebranding or anything. But it didn't have a lot of the things I expect from a cinema yeah. camera. I couldn't load my own LUTs on it. We didn't have waveforms. We didn't have vector scopes. All those kind of things that I expect from a cinema camera. Mm -hmm. And I really love what Canon did with the R5C, where it's like if you're shooting photos, it uses the photo operating system. But then when you switch it over to video mode, it uses the full cinema interface. All of those features are available to you. Look at like Panasonic or something like that as well. You've got access to all of those professional video features. I'd love to see another crack at an FX camera, but one that is a very small body with all of those software features that I expect from a cinema camera. So the next piece of advice, it's tough because marketing wise it's working so well, but from a consumer standpoint, I just wish we could end the numbers game. Okay, but Sony's market share is like exploding. It's clearly working for them. Like if I want the most numbers, sure. a lot of the time I want a Sony camera. They got the best numbers, Chris, explain yourself. Yeah, and I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, a lot of companies have been doing this and, and people have been complaining about it since the very beginning, right? Pushing big numbers, just trying to get it out because it looks so good in the market. But I guess my issue is this, you do get great technology like the Sony A1 EVF, right? 9.44 million dots, way beyond anything anybody else has put in. I get how that's really appealing on the market, but it comes with so many caveats, like the resolution drops when you start autofocusing. It drops if you want a you know, proper frame rate for shooting action and sports. And I feel like every time us as reviewers pick up a Sony camera, a new one, we're like, Oh, we, we got to, is find, it going to drop? We right? got to find the catch. Yeah. like the You're E7. always looking for these catches. And obviously they're not very upfront about saying, oh, by the way, you know, yeah, don't like do the this, A7 don't do this, do When we first got that, it's like, we are not getting 10 frames per second. Like, oh, right. We're shooting the lossless compress mode, which was one of the selling features of yeah. the A7 IV that it had it. Only but it lossy compressed. Rate. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, it just gets confusing for users. Like, I mean, the A1 shooting 30 frames per second, but only in lossy compressed or JPEG mode. And again, only with a select few lenses that they make. I mean, it's things like this where someone sees it on paper and they say, that's perfect for me. And they might buy a product and realize, ooh, it actually doesn't work. That's not a great feeling. The other thing Sony really needs to do is figure out what they're gonna do with their APS-C lineup or just, Except, hey, we're not gonna do APS-C anymore. Here's a very cheap entry point to full frame cameras. Yeah, Sony seems to be in a bit of a limbo area right there. I mean, APS-C, we don't know what's gonna happen. Are they gonna keep it? Are they gonna get rid of it? Nobody knows. The A7C is, I guess, their most affordable full frame camera. Honestly, it's pricier than the other entry level competitors. It's not as entry level, but it still kind of feels like an entry level camera when you it, play with it. It does, but I think if they want to kind of open that up a little bit, they could do the thousand dollar full frame camera, you know, even pull an EVF off, do whatever they have to, to really scale it back or something. Or I do think there's a huge opportunity where they've brought out you know, stacked sensors for their main sensor formats. One inch, full frame. The only one that's missing really is APS-C. APS like I would love to see a crop sensor Sony like D500 kind of camera, like their flagship technology 
in an APS-C camera. Right. They could certainly do that, you know, maybe change the body design. Yeah, it's make been it, the same forever. Make it look like a Hasselblad Stellar. Everybody's <laughs> forgot about that camera. They'll look at the game and be like, wow, that's amazing. It's Don't so do gorgeous. That. Yeah, no, no, that's beautiful. But I do think there is a big opportunity there. And yeah, that sensor on their APS-C line is totally out of date. I know that they've suspended production of a lot of those cameras. I'm hoping that it's so they can focus on breathing new life into their APS-C cameras or they're giving up and everybody's just gonna move to full frame. I think we can all agree they need something. Yeah. All right, this might just be a me thing, but I would also really like to see a replacement for the RX-10 II, maybe call it like the RX-10 II Mark II, you know, with that great 24 to 200 f2.8 lens. It was a great video camera and they never really followed up with that in okay, any meaningful way. I would love to have an RX-1 R triple X with a 28 millimeter lens, not that 35, and it's only a thousand bucks and it's titanium body with a wooden handle and it says so Hasselblad now we've Stellar just gone on to it. Like, like, it's not gonna happen, I'm sorry, the RX-10 is dead, George. Personalized wish fulfillment is probably not like the best business route no. that Sony could take at this point, but hopefully this video shows there's definitely some room for improvement in how Sony's running their camera business. But also that we're not mean and we're saying nice things about the brand too. And we you don't have to Sony. get angry on the forums and everything like that. You know, but your opinions absolutely are valued because you're the end user. So leave your thoughts in the comments below what you'd like to see Sony improve and maybe what they already do really well. Yeah, and we're gonna talk about other camera companies because yep. they all do some great things and have some room for improvement. If you wanna see more videos in this series, you're definitely gonna wanna subscribe. And again, just a big thanks to Sony for being such good sports and making such nice cameras with lots of nice things to say about them. And I really like their color. It's gotten so much better. It's great now, right? And their gaming consoles are wonderful if you can find them. Am I right? Anyways, thank you guys for joining us and please do stay tuned for more episodes of Deep Review TV.